So it has come time to do the distributor transmitters, the one that reads tapes and uh, sends it. You know, the, the question might be, is it a different speed? Fortunately, I have a box of gears, but none of them were the one we needed. So you need a set uh, to change the, the speed. And so we'll have to find somebody that has the parts. This is still a tight paradise. Let's see if I can find this. It's the, yeah, the drum. That I think it has some more. Okay. This, this bar comes off. Right. This assembly screws in. Okay. This is here, but needs to be unwired. Uh, I have the parts of mine out of the bath and that was the plate that was all rusted so fortunately I could take it all apart so I made it a lot easier to clean so cleaned and oiled everything and our resistor that broke that's the uh, so we need to find a new one of that we'll replace I think I've done the most difficult part of the reassembly here. So all I have to do is rewire it now and uh, we have the wiring diagram and then we took good notes. If I rewire the bit in the right order here. Hey, um, Carl, I need your finger. Can you press gently on the on the bars here so they are all open? <laughs> all you have five? To yeah, all five. Because then, if not, I cannot. At the same time, right? Huh? Well. I well, right now you've got it shorted on some bit, right? So you got to rotate it to the point where you want. Okay, so press the one, bit one. No. Oh, I'm on start. No. See, but start's shorted, so until that moves, you can't do anything. So you got to... No, start's open. Yeah, you're right, starts. Well, no, but that's on stop. Oh, it's on stop. Right, so you gotta click that and there we go. There we go. I have to test between this and this is bit one. So bit one is on the left and we were totally wrong. So, and that should be bit two, bit three, bit four, bit five. Then stop should be on. Right. And start should be nothing. Correct. Okay. We had a little bit of a hiccup trying to reconnect the uh, final lines here, uh, which is the mark space and the filters. And we discovered that our original wiring was not uh, kosher, uh, but fortunately we entangled the schematics and uh, figured out where everything goes. There's some that go collect the mark contacts, some collect the space contacts, and there's one that collects the middle, and there's two filters. And fortunately, we have 
Carl's machine and we confirmed that Carl's machine was, was uh, wired uh, according to the diagram so we are going to, to rewire it correctly hopefully and we should be ready to go. Alright and then so center center and then they are splices so this thing is you no know, all around the TTY yes. there are splices in, in tape but that's the way you're supposed to do it. Alright, it's just, uh, oh yeah, we could show it on, on yours, but on the schematic, it does show it as splice and tape. Um, and that's so you can do several configurations, right, and you can w move those filter around. And last but not least, the broken resistor, and we got it from Mr. RTTY, the exact same one. This is quite interesting, because this is 110, and obviously, they have a 1930s equ equivalent of heat shrink tubing in here, which I think is some kind of tube with a varnish on it. It's gotten super hard. It's, it's equivalent yeah. of heat shrink, mm -hmm. it, except it, I, I suspect that looks more like it was goop. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's goop shrink. I, I, I think this is exactly. It, it was like painted on. And yeah, then yeah. Shrunk. It's, it's shrunk with some kind of, mm -hmm. of uh, not heat, a uh, resin or a varnish. Oh, I it's see varnish that. shrink. It's goop. Chemically. Um, oh, it has a name. There's a name for that stuff that shrinks. Dope is the. Oh, yeah. dope. 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 Yeah. It's dope. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Truly this is dope. dope. It is definitely dope. <laughs> yeah. So, it's a dope yes, shrink that's what he said. Is, yeah. instead of being a, a heat shrink. Okay, so our new resistor is in. And those little things, they are leather, so they made it pretty good uh, compared to the one in Carl's that is rubber. But they were painted over, so I need to get rid of the paint here. And the leather made it to this day. And since it's leather, you can put some shoe shine on it. Okay, as good as new. All right. Okay, I went through the million manual pages. You wouldn't think a distributor would be that complicated. Uh, and I think this is adjusted properly. So the difficult part is definitely the clutch here. I don't know if I can give you a good view. Just right here, and so it will keep going. Stop it. All right. The most difficult one was the uh, friction clutch. No, there's a plate that you can turn, and not enough, and it will slip and too much and it's hard to turn the motor but I think now that's about perfect. The brushes need to be square and center. There's a nice line on top of the thing. So. And then there's another dicey adjustment is that the pin must retract and the tape must advance but not before we are on the stop bit here. 
So I think I'm almost there, but not quite. Uh, I am I made a band with letters. So it should be all ones except the start bit. So if I start it manually, start is a space. First bit is a mark, second mark, third bit, and so on. And the fifth bit is almost good, except I lose it right there. Then the stop bit is good. So it looks like I'm uh, retracting my pins a little too soon. And there is an adjustment for that, but uh, when I uh, retract the pins later, then the tape doesn't advance anymore. So there is an adjustment way hidden inside. It's a little screw over there that they tell you to adjust so that the retraction of the pins and the moving of the ratchet are synchronous and the the adjustment is that it just engage when the pins are flush with the uh, top plate which is the position it's at right now it wasn't so so now adjustment number two we are going to back out the time at which the pin retracts and that's on the bottom of the machine and this is this adjustment here and i want to retract later but the danger is that at one point the ratchet won't work anymore i am Almost there. I lost my bit for a very small fraction of the time and I still have the ratchet. Okay. Another quarter turn and it will be there. There. Okay, bit stayed and I think the ratchet went. Let's try it. That might be it. Keep my bit. Looks good. Okay, so I'm going to try to power it up for the first time. All right. No sparks. Okay, that's what it should. Looks good to me. This was making a weird noise though. If the magnet hums when energ energized with the AC, which is what I am hearing, turn the bracket in a counterclockwise direction slightly to decrease the clearance between the armature and the part of the center pole and circle by the copper slug, whatever that means. Okay. We'll try that. And turn this one on. And that should be R and Y's. One, two, three, go. Alright, and it worked. This is our first transmission here of R and Y's. So let's uh, put something more interesting and transmit it through tape. And this long one over here is a treat for our French speaking viewers. I'm going to do a little bit of poetry on the teletype. And a one, and a two, and here we go.
there we go. Pierre de Ronsard, 1524. 